Hi, I'm Dave Friedman, a faculty member in the Department of Neurobiology at the University of Chicago. And I'm Chris Rischel, an MD-PhD student in Computational Neuroscience. In this video abstract, we're going to tell you about some of our work that's recently been published in Neuron. I just defended my PhD thesis, and the bulk of the work we're going to talk about was the focus of my project. One of the main interests in my lab is to understand the neuronal mechanisms underlying visual categorization and category learning. For example, we easily recognize the category of familiar visual stimuli. In a visual scene such as this one, I recognize visual categories such as table, chair, telephone, and computer. But of course, I wasn't born with built-in knowledge of categories like table or telephone. Instead, categories like these are learned through experience. And in my lab, one of the central questions guiding our research is to understand how the brain learns and encodes categorical information about visual stimuli. A number of recent neurophysiological studies have found that information about visual categories can be encoded in the spiking patterns of neurons in several cortical areas. In recent work in my lab, we have explored the role of the posterior parietal cortex, shown here in this lateral view of the monkey brain. In particular, we have focused on the lateral interparietal area, or LIP, located within the interparietal sulcus. In a series of studies, we have trained monkeys to perform a variety of visual categorization tasks and have found particularly strong category encoding in LIP. The posterior parietal cortex and area LIP is often studied in the context of visual spatial functions, for example, guiding spatial attention and saccadic eye movements. However, the category effects we have observed in LIP are inherently non-spatial because of the behavioral task that the monkeys were trained to perform. This raises the possibility that area LIP might play parallel roles in both spatial and non-spatial functions. To look at this possibility, we designed this study to directly and simultaneously compare spatial and non-spatial encoding in area LIP. So in order to examine the interaction of category and spatial signals, we needed a task design that included category and spatial components. For the categorization component of the task, we trained monkeys to group 360 degrees of motion directions into two categories, separated by a learn category boundary. And here you see an example stimulus which belongs to category number one. The monkeys use these categories in a delayed match to category task as shown here. During each trial, the monkeys were required to fixate upon a spot on the center of the display while stimuli were presented in the periphery. After fixation was established, a sample stimulus was presented. After a delay, the monkey had to report whether a test stimulus was in the same category as the sample by releasing a lever. To determine the influence of spatial signals on category information in LIP, during some trials, the monkey was cued to make a saccade either toward or away from the receptive field of the neuron under study. The saccade was cued by relocating the fixation spot, requiring the monkey to make a saccade to reacquire fixation at the new location. The monkey maintained his gaze at the new fixation location for the remainder of the trial. Importantly, the monkey has no way to predict whether a saccade will be cued and saccades had no relevance for solving the categorization task. Additionally, while the monkey was trained using many motion directions within each category, only four motion directions, separated by 90 degrees, were used as sample stimuli during recording sessions. So, to give you an idea of our results, we'll show you the data collected from one example neuron for each of the three spatial conditions. In the top right of the video, you will see an example trial of what the animal sees as he performs the task. In the bottom left, you will see the response of the neuron for the four different sample directions averaged across many trials. Starting with the no saccade condition, we see that category selectivity emerges shortly after the onset of the sample stimulus and is maintained throughout the delay into the test period. During the saccade toward condition, we again see strong category encoding during the sample and early delay, as we would expect, since until the saccade cue, the conditions are identical. When the saccade is cued, we see a strong response from the neuron, but note that category information is preserved both during the saccade and for the remainder of the trial. During the saccade away condition, the neuron exhibits a minimal response to the saccade, but again, category information is preserved both during the saccade and throughout the remainder of the trial. As we show in the manuscript, we see a similar effect across the population, that although both category and spatial information are strongly represented in many LIP neurons, the strength of each signal has a minimal influence on the simultaneous representation of the other. 
This suggests that the parietal cortex and area LIP may play parallel roles in spatial and non-spatial cognitive functions. Thank you for your interest in our work and feel free to contact us with any feedback or questions.